So what actually limits how much money the banks can create? You've probably seen the standard multiplier explanation of fractional reserve banking that we discussed in an earlier video. In this model, the banks have to keep a percentage of their customers' money in reserve. The reserve ratio given is usually 10%, which means that for every £100 paid into a bank by customers, the bank must keep £10 in reserve somewhere. This means that the banks can only expand the money supply up to 10 times the amount of real government-created money. We said that this model of banking is completely inaccurate, at least in the UK. For a start, the required reserve ratio in the UK isn't 10%, it's zero. But more fundamentally, the reserve ratio would only actually limit the amount of money that banks can create if the reserve money were actually taken out of circulation and put into a safe deposit box or an electronic equivalent. If the Bank of England actually required banks to hold £10 of cash or central bank reserves for every £100 that they typed into their customers' bank accounts, then that would limit the money supply to around 10 times the amount of base money, the cash and central bank reserves. The pyramid model would then actually apply. But this is almost never what happens. When there was a reserve ratio in the UK, it was what was called a liquidity ratio. A liquidity ratio is deceptively similar to a reserve ratio, but fundamentally different. A liquidity ratio requires banks to hold liquid assets equal to a percentage of their deposits. So if a liquidity ratio was set at 10%, that a bank with £100 in a customer's account would need to hold £10 of liquid assets. Now you're probably thinking, what's the difference between this and the normal reserve ratio? Well, the key point is the term, liquid assets. Liquid assets include cash and central bank reserves, but they also...